And so at this time, I'm pleased to welcome Jim Lemoyne, Assistant Professor with the Organization and Human Resources Department in the Jacobs School of Management. Jim's teaching includes the areas of organizational behavior and leadership, along with his research in the areas of ethics and morality, leadership and motivation, creativity, and research methods. Welcome, Jim. Okay, thank you very much. Um, can everybody see my screen? I've got a PowerPoint up. Can yes. I get a thumbs up? We're good? Okay, great. Uh, first up, before I get in, um, I have to apologize. Um, I, uh, I, I think I dropped the ball here, and I actually didn't see the PowerPoint template that we were supposed to base everything around, so this one's going to be completely different, um, and, and I hope that's okay with everybody. Quite um, all right, Jim. Thanks. Also, I don't have as much to say about, um, about UB Learns and testing and things like that. I'm really going to laser focus this presentation around uh, just some ideas I'd like to share about teaching effectively with engaging video, keeping it interesting at times as appropriate, keeping it funny, uh, giving them a reason to keep watching, keep tuning in, so to speak, so on and so forth. Um, and, and one thing that I wanted to say before I roll into this is that we have a tendency, every teaching conference I've gone to, someone's gone up, uh, gone up on stage or gone to the pre presenter's box and they've shared some really great ideas that work in their discipline. And the first thing we all think is, oh, that would be great if I was an engineering teacher, or if I was a science teacher, or if I was a history teacher, but it won't work in my discipline. Uh, but the funny thing is, you know, it doesn't matter what discipline it is. The engineers think, oh, if only I taught business, this would be so much easier. The business people think, oh, if only I taught education or history, it would be so much easier. So I challenge you as you're looking at this, I'm going to use a few domain specific examples. Think a little bit less about what you can't do and think a little bit more about what you can. When I, when I try to force myself to get into that mindset, it seems to help an awful lot. Um, as I roll into this, just, uh, just a few things to preface the conversation about an overall teaching philosophy. I very strongly believe, and research backs me up on this, that if students are bored, they're not learning. Um, research shows that if you look like this girl in this picture, um, you're not paying attention as much, you're not retaining the information, you're not translating it into your own words, into your own language, in your head, uh, and there's no real reason for you to remember it. And if they're not learning, we're, we're, we're wasting our time, folks. Uh, so this doesn't mean they always have to be entertained. Uh, you don't have to put on a song and dance, although I have some colleagues who actually literally have done a song and dance. Um, but the, the point I really want to make, and, and really that, that runs through why, I'm, uh, why I put this, this stuff together, we don't learn effectively when we're bored. It's our job as, as instructors, as professors, as teachers, uh, to make sure that they have some level of interest in the material. Um, they learn the most when they're ha having a reaction of some kind. The philosopher Robert Greenleaf wrote that there's nothing a teacher can say to change someone else's mind or actually get them to learn something. The only thing that can change someone's mind or get them to learn is if something happens that they have a reaction to. So what could they have a reaction to in your class? You know, maybe it's just because the topic is so interesting and you know, we, we should all think our topics are that interesting because this is what we chose to do with our lives. Maybe it's because they see the real world implications of it for their careers. Uh, maybe it's because they had a good laugh. Maybe because the professor's a little bit crazy and they're not sure what they're going to do next. And I'll show you some examples of all of these as we move through it. Um, I believe humor is a really powerful tool for maintaining student interest and potentially making your material come alive. Um, it, it, it forces them to pay attention. Their brains are stimulated by it. And one, one simple thing I'll tell you, have you ever had a problem with students not reading your syllabus? That ever happened? No, of course, because all your syllabi are great, right? I had a big problem with, with students not reading my syllabus until I started putting memes on every page. Like this is the meme that I put on the front page of my syllabus two years ago. And ever since I started doing that, everybody reads the syllabus. I, I just have one of those on every page, something like that, something to do with the syllabus. Um, and, and like I've actually had them tell me, you know, you know Professor, I, I usually wouldn't have read this, but I, I didn't want to make you an alcoholic. And I'm, okay, great, fine, fantastic. I'm, I'm glad we're on the same page on that. So humor is a good way to keep them involved, get them interested. Um, at first, I thought, oh my goodness, I got to go online. I've only got 10 days. I have to go asynchronous. Let me say that up front. I had to do asynchronous because I had students who went back home overseas. So I had people in all kinds of time zones. So I'm just posting videos. I didn't want to do it in the middle of the night for my students who are in Vietnam or in India or anything like that. How do you do that? You know, usually I do a lot of class interaction. I do a lot of humor. Um, hard to do with a voice over PowerPoint. It, it can be difficult to do in a Zoom, right? Um, so I went to a lot of the sessions like this and found out about university resources. Um, and I learned that we actually have here at the University at Buffalo uh, a green screen studio. 
And for those not familiar with the green screen, that's kind of a picture of what it looks like. Uh, that's not me, neither of them. Uh, you can, it's, it's basically a blank wall that you can put any picture you want behind you. You can actually put a PowerPoint behind you. Um, and in fact, I'll let you in on a little secret here. Let's see if this works. I'm in the green screen right now. Um, so you haven't been just watching my shared screen. Um, I am in the beautiful UB Silverman Library, a beautiful day here in Buffalo, New York. And what you're looking at is the green screen studio. On the wall behind me, it's just a blank wall. You can't tell, though. It's like a weatherman kind of thing, where you know where they're pointing and everything. I can see what you see. This is my PowerPoint. Um, I use this for all my videos because I didn't like the idea of, of me just being a head, or you know how it usually is where they're looking up your nose when you're doing kind of a, a panopto voiceover PowerPoint. I wanted to be able to get in front of them. I wanted to make it as much like the actual instruction that I usually do with them as, it possibly, as I possibly could. Um, so I'm going to say this again at the end, but let me say this here at the beginning. I'm in the Silverman Library. There's no cost to this. This is a great service that you can use. They'll help you set it up. You don't need to have any technical know-how. All you really need is a thumb drive with your slideshow on it, um, and they'll lock you in a soundproof room so you won't be embarrassed. Um, you'll have someone to help you. Uh, this guy right here, actually, you know, it's backwards, so it's hard to do. This is a picture of uh, Mr. Omar Brown. He was recently uh, spotlighted in UB Now as one of our uh, key essential employees. He's here all the time. He will help you get set up, even help you with a little bit of video editing. The guy's brilliant. He's very helpful. He's actually helping me with this right now, um, right before he does one for the president. So, hey, if the green screen studio is good enough for the president of the university, surely it's good enough for you. I want to point this out. This is the reservation space right here. Look, tomorrow, it's wide open. Nobody's reserved it. He told me that he's, uh, they're, they're a little frustrated that more people don't know that they have this service. If you want to do something a little different, um, something that lets you put a little bit more of yourself. I, I heard the first speaker, uh, 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 Professor Horn, talking about how it's a shame with a lot of this online stuff, we lose a lot of the body language and gestures. Well, guess what? We get a little bit of this back. Um, it helps things come alive a little bit more when you do the green screen. So, you know, if you think, I, I wanted to start out with this. This is what I use for all my videos. And I got a lot of feedback from my students saying, wow, that was different. That was great. It wasn't just a voiceover PowerPoint. Um, and I'm not going to call anybody out here, but um, my, uh, my wife actually recently got her second degree from the University of Buffalo. And her courses went online, and she had a lot of voices over PowerPoint. And man, a lot of them were just boring and monotonous. And, you know, it, it helps you put a little bit of energy into it if that matches with your personality. Think about it. I'll show the link to reserve this space uh, at the end of my presentation. Um, but see, I mean, this is, this is actually, you can see, uh, it was easier to go to a, go to a barber uh, at the beginning of the corona thing. Uh, but you can see um, that getting in the presentation lets you, you know, that this looks a lot different than just a simple voice over PowerPoint kind of thing. Um, so why do I recommend the green screen? And the hard thing is you're backwards. So you got to remember whether you move to the left or the right. Uh, here's a few reasons. Um, nobody wants to look up your nostrils, right, as you stare down at your webcam. The voiceover PowerPoints, as I said, can be really boring for the students. It gives you a chance to show some energy and enthusiasm. Why would I, well, why would I want to show some energy and enthusiasm, Jim? Well, if you are not excited about your subject matter, why should your students be? Um, so, you know, if you need to chug a Red Bull or a big cup of coffee, run to Starbucks. Starbucks is open. The campus Starbucks is open. Right before you get into the green screen studio, you do that. Um, you always try to open up with a little bit of energy. Um, if you start out bored, it, looking bored, you know, just coming, okay, hello, welcome to the next class, you know, they're totally not going to get into it. And again, the green screen really lets you communicate a little more energy than you otherwise could. Let you use the body language, gestures, walk around. You can walk off the screen. They won't even know you're there. You can point to things, you know, you point to emphasize major points. They, they actually give you this, uh, this, is, this, is, this is nice. They give you this really nice ruler that you can use to point to things if you want to go with the old, old time school marm approach, I guess. I don't know. I never used it. Um, and public speaking in general is a lot, there, there's research on this. It's a lot more powerful if you're standing rather than sitting. Now, I'm not saying it can't be done while you're sitting. What I am saying is when we stand up, we have better airflow. Um, it lets the air move through our lungs a lot better, so it lets us project better. So it lets us put more emotion into our voice. It lets us put more energy into our voice. It lets us put more oomph, uh, more charisma, more power into your voice, things like that. Um, another thing I really like about using a green screen uh, would be, oops, okay, there we go, would be that it lets you show just how professionally and seriously you're taking this. And what I mean by this is you are going to have a lot more credibility with your students. They're going to pay attention to you more if you look more like this and maybe a little less like this in your pajamas. 
Um, I always, I would always joke at some point in the class and say, look, I can prove to you I'm wearing pants right now because, you know, we, we, we never know with these Zoom meetings, right? But I dress up for them. I, I, you know, it shows them even though we're going online, this is still a big deal. This is still a big professional deal. We're still going to make this class as big a thing as we possibly can, and I want you to be as active and involved in this as, uh, as, as I am. Um, now, other things you can do, um, and again, this, this may not float your boat, but one thing I did a lot in my class is, uh, and you could do this regardless of even if you were just doing a voiceover PowerPoint, um, you can make up a production team. Um, one thing that I would do a lot, starting with the first video, and you'll see, I'll show you a clip in a bit, is I talked about my director, who would always stand right there, and I always knew exactly where to look, and his name was Bob, and he never said anything because he was the shy type, and because he was the shy type, he never made it on camera either. Um, so I would get asked by the students a lot, you know, can we see a picture of Bob? Like, they got into it, right? Every now and then I would talk to this person off, off the camera. They would never see him, but they were interested enough. There's, I actually got emails, can you show a picture of Bob? Can you get Bob on screen? And when I did, I just, I just showed him this. We were having technical difficulties at the time. You could have a conversation with someone off the screen. You know, if you want to blame something on someone, well, I wanted to do this in this class. I didn't want to give you homework, but Bob said we had to. You know, it's cheesy. It's corny. It's a tiny little thing. But it actually came up on a lot of student evaluations. What can you do like that to, to just give them a little bit of showmanship, uh, for instance? You know, just, just to add a little bit of levity, a little bit of humor, um, to show that the subject matter is serious, but you don't have to take it very seriously um, or take yourself very seriously all the time. Um, one thing that I tried, I realized for my first video, I was going to record an hour and a half video. Um, and I was really worried that the students would get bored of just listening to me talk um, about just, it was organizational justice, trust, and ethics, and some of that material can be a little dry. Um, so I had the idea, I thought, why not, we'll give it a shot. Um, I'm going to throw in a fake commercial at about the midpoint of the video. And, and my thought in this was, you know, it'll just catch them by surprise. They'll be like, wow, what the hell did the professor just do? But it would, it would kind of rekindle their interest. It'd be, kind of be like a break. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't know how it would work out, but I, I got so many, I actually got emails from the students saying, thanks so much for that weird ad. I totally caught me by surprise. Thanks for making it interesting. Like I got gratitude from the students. How, how often do we get that, right? Uh, so I was really excited to get stuff like that. Um, and I'm just going to, I just, I, I didn't do anything fancy. I just put some pictures up and talked over them. I'm going to show you some clips of just how I did it. Um, and maybe it'll, maybe it'll spur some ideas for you. What do you think? is the most fair way to compensate your employees. And did we lose the sound? Oh, okay. uh, can you yeah. hear me? Give so me a, can can you hear the video? Yes, no? I can so, hear it. It's a little low, but we can hear it. Say okay. hi. Do you want to come out and say hi? Bob is directing. No, he doesn't. OK. Bob doesn't want to come out. Bob is directing it. Apparently, the university had to get some sponsorships to allow, enable us to use this. What am, what am I supposed to do here? I, I didn't put the, we, OK, hang on. Yes, Santa coffee, made of only the finest coffee beans. Each cup of Santa coffee has a bonus ingredient. Two ounces of Purell hand sanitizer poured right into the coffee. Even your excrement is prettier in the new rainbow toilet. Try the new placebo clinic. When you don't have to pay for trained staff and you can use innovative new medicines not yet approved by the FDA, you'll save money. Our staff has plenty of openings and are waiting for you. That's the placebo clinic, where you almost certainly, probably, may not die, maybe. Okay, so I couldn't hear that video. I'm assuming that you guys could, though, uh, since, since I didn't have people look, look like complaining or anything like that. Um, but, you know, cheesy. Um, each one took maybe 30 seconds, right? And you might argue, aren't you just wasting time? As the Mad Hatter said once, you knew time half as well as I would, you wouldn't dream of wasting it. Well, maybe, you could argue that way, yeah. So out of an hour and a half video, I wasted maybe a minute on, on something like this fake commercial. Uh, but the idea was, my, this was my first goal, uh, my, my first video, I'd never done one of these before, I've never taught online before, and I just really wanted to surprise them, right? Um, just, just do something, and I wanted to do something that would tie in somehow. For instance, the one you just saw for the placebo clinic was from, a, uh, in that lecture, uh, I was actually talking about ethics, and we were talking a little bit about hospitals and healthcare and, and claims made and things like that, so I tried to make these fake ads tie in. Uh, to be honest, the rainbow toilet one didn't tie in at all, but, but my, my kids begged me. They found that picture on the internet, and they was like, you've got to do a fake ad about this. 
Um, but I want to surprise them. And surprises are a big reason for students to keep watching your videos. Like if they think something, something interesting is going to happen, something unique is going to happen, something that my friends could be talking about, like they, like they could be talking about in chat, um, it gives them a reason to watch all the way through instead of just you know watching it at double speed, which we all know some of the students do to try to get through it faster or just skipping around to try to get to certain points, which we can see on Panopto whether they do or not. Um, I had really good luck with, seeing my, with, with having my students actually watch videos all the way through. And as I said, I got some nice feedback that I was actually taking 30 seconds out of the class just to, just to lighten the mood a little bit, give them something a little different, make them laugh. Um, I got a lot of positive feedback after the first one. Um, it showed up on my evaluations. I got some emails about it, and it encouraged me, so I, I just kept doing them. I, now, I'm not saying a lot. I'm saying, like, in every video, it was like an hour and a half long. I'd have a 30-second ad in the middle of it, something like that. Maybe that would work for you, maybe not. Maybe there's something else you could do just to keep their attention. You know, every 30 minutes, every 45 minutes, something that just takes a break. Um, maybe let them see the human side of you. Uh, you know, maybe you just show, show a funny video from YouTube, but something just to keep their interest and make them think, wow, here's what you want. Wow, it's really cool the professor took the time to do that. Wouldn't that be cool if, you, if your students said that? Wow, you're, I, that is so cool that the professor, most professors would never have done that, but they really cared about making sure we were staying interested. And if that sounds idealistic to you that a student would say that, I got a lot of emails about it. I, and I'm sure some of the other uh, professors, uh, the last one, uh, Professor Horn had been on, I'm sure they got pretty similar emails as well. Um, where do you get ideas for stuff like this? Actually, I watched a lot of old Saturday Night Live sketches. I'm talking the old stuff, you know, like, like the Steve Martin stuff, not, not the recent crap. Um, sketch comedy skits, uh, Weird Al Yankovic songs. My kids tuned me into that, and uh, there, there are some neat ideas. Um, but again, it doesn't have to be a fake ad. Um, that's, that's, that's not necessarily what I'm promoting to you. I'm just trying to inspire you. What can you do um, every 30 to 45 minutes or so that's really going to keep their interest, that, that's going to keep them watching, that's going to make them say, OK, you know, I really don't want to watch the class video, but you know, the professor's trying, so I will do that. that, that that's really my goal here, is to, is to get them to want to watch it, even, even if they don't want to watch all their class videos. Uh, what can you do every 30 to 45 minutes to keep their interest? And keep in mind that uh, you know, my videos were like an hour and a half. Um, I was talking to Mr. Omar, and he told me that there are some people who come in here and film three and four hour videos, and I heard that from Professor Horn this morning. That is a long time to look at you. Um, and if you're like me, um, there will be a lot of really goofy uh, facial expressions and, and gestures and things for them to catch as you're talking. But still, looking at you the whole time, you know, they can get bored of that. And research actually shows that people, their interest in, in a presentation or, or something perks up a little bit whenever a new speaker comes on, whenever someone different starts talking. So that got me thinking, how can we be creative about that? How can I be creative about getting other people on here? Um, so another thing, bring in special guests. You know, we're always talking about bringing in guest speakers uh, from the Alumni Association and the like, uh, uh, you know, people who've done this. Um, some great examples earlier this morning. Well, what can we do? The interest level always goes up when a new speaker starts talking. And it could be something that someone pre-records and you include in your presentation. Um, it could be, well, I'll, I'll give you some ideas, a lot of different things. Now, I am fortunate or unfortunate, depending on how you look at it, in that I have nine-year-old twins. And they caught me planning some of the fake ads, and they said, oh, Daddy, I really want to be in your video. And I thought, oh, my goodness, I'm, I'm, I, uh, there's a lecture coming up on negotiation. Maybe they could take over my video. And the students abs absolutely loved it. Um, hopefully, the volume is still working. Here's a clip from that. I had a terrible nightmare that was being chased at by vegetables. But at the very end, I turned into cake and kicked their butt. What are you, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? I'm doing the first part because No, I do, I do the first part of the video. You were just here to watch. You don't get to do this. Oh. Give me the microphone. We can transform into anything they can. Now you. Now you. What are you doing? I'm talking. No, no, no. We're not talking. This, why, is, this is a class video. Why, They're can't, why can't we talk about snow leopards? So we're not talking about snow. What did you do with my screen? No, no. We're not talking about snow. Give me the mic. No. Give me the mic. Give me. No, no, no. Don't, you, give me. Give me that. No. Give me that. Give me. Give me. Give me. Give me. Yeah. Now go. 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 Sit. Go. Go sit down. No. Okay. Again, I hope the video is working. I can't actually. I can't see or hear it from this angle. So I hope that's good for you. Um, so, so here's the point. You don't have to have little kids, although they are awesome for it. 
Um, I'm actually going to go, if, if we're still doing video next time I teach this class, I'm actually going to have a full negotiation with them um, on screen to get control of my class back from them uh, be, because they were a big hit. So if you've got little kids, you've got grandkids, you know somebody who's got kids, they want to be YouTube stars. You know, my kids jumped at the opportunity. I just told them they had to dress exactly like I did. Um, but okay, you don't. What, what else could you do? Could you have another professor come in? either into a studio or into your office or into your home or, or just recording a video on their own. And could you debate a key point? Could you provide two points of view or two sides of an experiment or, or two different perspectives on a historical story, whatever it is, could you get a different professor involved with you? Again, just seeing another face besides your own helps maintain and raise student interest. Um, can you have a video of your department admin? This is something I just came up with as I was thinking about this and this is something I really wanna do. Um, my, in my department, with all due respect to my chair, um, it is no secret that our admin is the true leader of our department. So with that in mind, I thought it would be awesome to have her come in and actually uh, have a conversation with me. Um, explain uh, why what I just said was wrong. Correct me. Give another point of view. Maybe rope her into it because um, she's very personable. Um, can you get your students? Uh, I did a little bit of this to submit videos of, of, of key points, um, include them in the presentation, maybe their own perspective, maybe they're telling a story, um, getting them involved in it. So again, it's not just you, you're just showing a video that was submitted by the class. This gets them really interested too, because maybe they'll see themselves, maybe they'll see a friend. Again, you're just, you're just trying to get different people in there to, to break up the monotony, get it a little bit more involved like that. Um, I have a friend who actually, this, this takes a little more uh, timing, um, but he actually argued with a video of himself. Um, so basically, he stood like here, um, and he had the video talking the other way, um, and he timed it, so he was having an argument with himself. And uh, that's ambitious. I don't know if I could do that, but if you could work out the timings, um, you can imagine that would really get student interest up. You'd probably be a YouTube star if you did something like that. Um, can you get short YouTube clips to make your point for you? Just because we're going online doesn't mean we can't use YouTube clips. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, they're working in the green screen. Anyway, point I'm making, Change things up every now and then. Do something completely different. Anytime they're seeing someone else instead of you, it perks up their interest. And that's, that's just a basic psychological fact. When a new speaker comes into a conference or to a podium, um, people perk up a little bit because they're not in quite sure what the style will be, what's going on, it's unexpected. And part of my teaching philosophy is if you can surprise them in a good professional way, that will help keep their interest. You help keep their interest. Um, and basically, they're, they're, they're paying more attention. This can also be really useful if you're doing anything in your class related to perception and critical thinking. So I teach organizational behavior and psychology, basically how people think at work. And part of my unit is on decision making. So I talk a lot about the importance of perception and critical thinking. And I'll just share uh, something that I thought was pretty neat that I did. You saw in the video um, that I just showed how my son took over over, um, and he was talking about transformers and snow leopards. Um, I say all throughout, uh, throughout my course, you say, pay attention to everything. You never know in life what's going to be important. The bonus question on my third exam was actually, when young Benjamin Lemoyne took over his father's class, what were the two things he told you would be on the test? And, and if you were listening just then, he, he specifically said, pay attention, these two things will be on the test. He wasn't lying. Uh, they were just the bonus points, because I obviously I didn't want to uh, penalize him for that. But I actually got some emails from students afterwards saying, uh, most of them got it wrong, saying, wow, you were right. I totally watched the video, but I forgot I wasn't paying attention. I assumed it wouldn't be important. This is the value of perception. Uh, really only about 15% of the students remembered exactly what he'd been talking about, even though he specifically said this will be on the test. So how can you do creative things like that to make sure that your students are paying attention or maybe even catching you uh, when you say something that, uh, that, that, might be, that might not be true, might be wrong? Um, this isn't something that I do, that I necessarily did just for the online class, but in general, something I found is really helpful to get people to pay attention in class. At the very beginning of the semester, I tell them that 99.9% .9 of everything I teach uh, is research-based. It's backed up. I could give you a citation to show you why we believe this is true, but at one point in the semester, I'm going to lie to you. I tell them, I'm going to tell them something completely wrong, some, something that is the opposite of the research. In fact, if you think it through, it's the opposite of common sense. But I tell them, you're going to believe it because a professor said it. But if you catch me in the lie, I'll give you bonus credit. Now, nobody's ever caught me in the lie because I'm a damn good liar. But what this does is, from that point on, for the rest of the semester, they're thinking a little bit more critically about everything I say. And they'll raise their hand and say, well, Professor Jim, I think that's the lie. And here's why. And you know, they're just doing it. They're, they're doing it all the time because they, they want every chance to get the bonus credit that they can. But what I'm doing is I've just tricked them into engaging in critical thinking. 
Uh, and even by the middle of semester, when I reveal what the lie is, when I actually tell the lie and reveal it and nobody catches it, um, after that, they're still doing it because they've got in the habit of critical thinking. One thing I tell them a lot, just because a professor says something doesn't even necessarily mean it's right. I know I'm hitting my own credibility here, but I want them to question. I want them to think. I want them to engage in this kind of critical thinking. So some other ideas. What can you do to keep student interest in these videos? Um, using a pop culture example, or putting that up as your slide background, it can really stand out as they look through the video thumbnails. I'll show you an example of that in a little while. But can you, can you relate your topic to, I don't know, you know one of, what's popular right now? What are the kids into? The Avengers movies? Uh, Harry Potter? Twilight's not popular anymore, is it? I, 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 don't, I don't know. Um, can you bring in props, books to read from, uh, apparatus to show off? One, one video I saw, I, I saw some scientists and engineers bringing in stuff and actually playing with them in the green screen studio, showing how they fit together and how they did things or, or mixing, even mixing things. Um, think about in your domain. Um, could you bring, could you bring it, even just bring in a book and reading it. If they see you holding up a book and reading, you know, that, that's a little something different to break up the monotony. Um, in one of my lectures, you're going to see a clip. You know, I would crumple up my notes. I'd get frustrated and throw them on the floor. You know, anything you can do like that. Um, I have a friend who, for one of her classes, uh, she would, uh, who put on a different hat uh, every time she went on screen. And she wouldn't say anything about it, like, because like, she was going back and forth between herself and YouTube videos. But every time she'd come on, she'd have the same outfit and just a slightly different hat. Didn't say a thing about it. Students absolutely loved it. She just got a whole bunch of hats at the thrift store. Um, and, and, and they really liked it. It kept the interest. They appreciated that. Um, think of your class videos maybe as you would episodes of a TV show. Uh, people like routine. Um, you could have an opening and you could have a closing. And I'm not talking about like, uh, you know, producing anything like that. But I, I had a certain line that I said at the beginning of every class. And then at the end of every class, I'd say, coming up on the next exciting installment of MGB 301 Introduction to Organizational Behavior. And then I'd, I'd tease the next thing. And I actually got emails about that. They, they, liked, they liked the structure. They liked the routine. Um, and even when I had my kids take over, I had them read the exact same line that I usually use, um, hoping the movies are still working. Again, I can't see them. Here's a clip, just, just a few of these intros. Well, good morning, afternoon, evening, or whatever the time is when you're watching this. And welcome to the 15th exciting online installment of MGB 301, Introduction to Organizational Behavior, the new special limited edition. No other class has gotten this online version. How are you doing today? Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or whatever it is where you are. And welcome to the 16th exciting now online installment of MGB 301 and now an online introduction to organizational behavior. How are you doing today? Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whatever it is right now. And welcome to the 17th exciting installment of MGB 301 introduction to organizational behavior. How are you doing today? Well, good morning, afternoon, evening, or whatever it is where you are. And welcome to the 20th and penultimate installment of MGV 301, an introduction to organizational behavior, now in this strange online form. How are you doing today? And you can tell from those clips that I was getting more confident. I was feeling better about it as I was going through the semester. And, and that was kind of neat to see. And I think the students picked on that, up on that as well. I was learning to look at the camera, uh, not necessarily at, the, uh, at my guide screen or anything like that, the monitors. But is there something you could say at the beginning? Again, this, this sounds like a tiny, corny, cheesy thing. But it's something that the students talked to me about and said that they really appreciate it. And, and people like a little bit of structure. They like it when they can guess what's coming next. Um, so, you know, again, you know, this might not be the perfect fit for your class, but hopefully it's something for you to think about. Then as far as incorporating uh, more interesting angles or humor into some of the things, here are the few things I did. Again, your impulse is going to be, well, that, that works for his subject and not mine, and I totally understand that. But think about, okay, does this inspire me? Could I, could I, could I run with this somehow? Or, or does that inspire you to do something related but different that would work for your class? Um, I know the kids love the late night TV show. I teach a class on giving effective feedback. Um, so for that one, I adapted Jimmy Kimmel's uh, celebrities read mean tweets about themselves into a professor's read mean comments about themselves. And I'll show you a clip from that in a bit. They seem to really like it. We talked about whether these comments were actually effective feedback or not. By the way, they weren't. 
Um, for a lecture on leadership, I actually use, going back to wanting to tie in some pop culture, I use Scooby-Doo. Uh, I know that there's a movie coming out. Everyone knows Scooby-Doo. Like, even the international students know Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo's, everyone knows Scooby-Doo. It's like Mickey Mouse. Uh, to illustrate things that were and weren't connected to good leadership, so is there a way you could tie in something, a classic cartoon, a recent movie, Harry Potter, I don't know, something from pop culture, just to get it up on the screen. So, is, so when they're, they're, they're scrolling through all the video thumbnails on their, on the, on their screen, that they see, oh, wow, Wow, there's something interesting in here. Maybe, maybe that's a reason to, to watch this all the way through. Um, call out students with amazing homework answers or with creative solutions to problems in the video regularly. Uh, get some listening to see if, uh, if they or their friends are mentioned. So I would name drop my students a lot. You know, I'd say, well, well Hannah said this or, or Joseph said that, and that was a really good idea. Never anything negative, right? Um, it's all positive. Um, the only time uh, negative humor should be acceptable for us is when it's self-deprecating. And even then, it can only go so far. Uh, but, but calling out your students by name, um, if they do video assignments, showing some clips from their video assignments, get them excited. Hey, will, will I show up? Will my friends show up? You know, will I see something cool from someone else? And again, it breaks up the monotony of just seeing you if you do the videos. Um, one that I'll show you in just a second. Uh, I have an ongoing discussion in my class about business ethics because it, it's kind of an overriding key theme, I believe, in more organizational behavior and psychology. So I told a story. Um, it's starting at the beginning, and it's kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure, if you remember those old books from the 80s and 90s, where the class would vote um, what should happen next in the story, what's the ethical thing to do, and then in the next, cla I, next class, I'd show them their votes in a big chart, um, and, I'd say, and then I'd say where the story was going from here. And I would encourage them to leave uh, open-ended, creative, interesting answers to these questions, what they think the answer would be. Um, I'll give you an example. After the Teams class, um, I posted a question about an apartment complex that was raising the rent by $200. And there was, a, there was an elderly person who, who, who'd been there for 10 years, and she couldn't afford it, fixed income. She couldn't afford it. So she went and begged the owner, say, please, I don't want to move out. I'd have to go to a nursing home. I can't get any money for my kids. Uh, please let me keep paying the lower rent, not with the $200. And I challenged them, okay, you could lower the rent, but you've, uh, you've also got other tenants saying, well, well, that wouldn't be fair. Why should she get a discount? Why don't I? What's the ethical thing to do, right? So this is an actual slide from my class that I showed them with actual responses. I said in the next class, well, about half of you said that uh, Miss Evelyn should be allowed to keep the apartment. Um, and, and in fact, one of you verbalized this argument for us by saying, let it slide. Uh, she'll be dead soon. I'll get her to cook me a meal now and then. Um, again, see, I don't have to be funny. They're being funny for me or, or, or very, very uh, inappropriate, however you want to look at it. Um, then I had another half of the class about saying, no, 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 I'm going to rent her apartment to someone else. It wouldn't be fair to charge her a lower rate than anybody else. And one person wrote on there, uh, come on, I barely know her. I'm sure she has kids. We could give her some extra cash. I mean, she birthed them. Um, and then there was one person who had what I think is the best answer to this question I've ever seen. Uh, there is no answer. Nobody knows. All we are is dust in the wind, dude. So this didn't require me coming up with any funny jokes. I just left it open to them. And I looked through it. I said, did anybody say something really neat? Put it on the chart. Again, and I didn't name names. I didn't tell them who said what. But uh, I, I got emails about this stuff. It showed up in the evaluations. People, people love this. I think the next clip I've got, it's the last clip. It's just a compilation of some of the things like this I did. There's a little bit from the Scooby-Doo class. There's a little bit from the professor's read mean comments about themselves. One thing I did for the final ethics class was to try to convey the idea that uh, ethics is a really difficult issue, that people think they know a lot about that don't, or you can go down a lot of false rabbit holes. Um, and Mr. Omar helped me with this. <clears throat> I kept stopping the class and saying, this isn't going to work. Bob, can we rewind the video and start it all over? And I did that a few times to try to convey to him, well, one, it made him laugh, but to convey to him just how complex this is and how many different approaches there were to it that were completely different. Here's a few clips. Take a look. He told me that he went out and he found uh, comments, apparently, that you guys have been leaving about these videos, and he thought it would be awesome to do a segment. His name is Scooby, or his full name is Scooby-Doo. As my kids told me the other day, actually, his first name is Scooby, his last name is Doo, and his middle name is Doobie. Maybe that's not the best way to, to teach the ethics class. If that's, if that's OK. Um, all right, Bob, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Um, we are gonna, we're going we're gonna to stop the tape. We're going to cut it. Um, we're not going to use that. Um, and we're going to start it over. So um, uh, stop. Stop. Um, uh, let's, let's begin this again, um, and we're going to do it right this time, okay? Jim's clothes and vests really make a statement. I think the statement is, I need someone to pick out my clothes for me. 
This is, this is, stop. Let's begin again. Erase that. There's got to be a better way. Jim Lemoyne is the nickelback of professors. You take that back. You take that back right now. You take that back. I am totally the Led Zeppelin of prof this is This is a really, a really stupid way uh, to teach ethics. So, Bob, this is not going to work. We're going to stop. We are going to begin it again. And we're going to, uh, I don't know this stuff. I'm going to talk about things I know. I'm going to talk about things I'm interested in. And we're going to use that. So stop. Let's begin again. If you need a nice, huge spot to relax in during the coronavirus stress, maybe you could try the professor's forehead. Well, that's, that's, that's very hurtful. So again, all of that might not work for you. Some of that might not work for you, but, but hopefully it gives you an idea. How can you work in something from pop culture that they'll really appreciate? Um, and again, you know, all of that, all, all of what I just showed you, it was tied, it wasn't just here's a joke, it was tied to the actual topic that was going on for leadership. I, I think we actually had a pretty good uh, discussion about, you know, how certain characters in Scooby-Doo displayed some leadership characteristics while others didn't. For feedback, we talked a little bit about how some of this is really not very effective. What would need to be there to make it effective, to tell me that I had a huge forehead? What could make that constructive? Um, for ethics, to really get the point across that there's so many different ways to look at it, um, and none of them are 100% right. Uh, so I think I'm a little bit ahead of schedule. I'm sorry, I've never presented this material before, but just to wrap up, um, just while the video was going on, I saw someone ask, how do I find out about the Silverman green screen hours? Here you go. Oop. See, it's backwards here, wait, here, wait, there. See, it, it takes some getting used to, I'm out of practice. It's been a couple of months. There's the website. Um, there's a couple of green screen studios. They uh, actually, Mr. Omar actually also just told me that they're converting some of their, um, their group study rooms that they can't use right now because of the coronavirus into, um, into um, less technologically advanced studios, but still with recording capacity. So if you just wanted to come into a nice quiet place, <coughs> and have a, have a whiteboard, you know, have some professional video recording done. Um, there's nothing stopping you. Uh, it's free for us professors. You can go to this website. Um, you, can, you can register for a time slot, reserve it. I actually, I actually had second thoughts about sharing this with you because I love the fact that uh, no matter when I, I want to get it, I, it's, it's open because it's like the best kept secret for professors here on campus. Uh, but it's, uh, I just looked this morning and like everything was open tomorrow. Um, it's a fantastic resource. It lets you get a little bit more of that body language, that chutzpah, uh, that expression, that energy, that engagement, that enthusiasm that the students really appreciate. Um, so I can't recommend this enough. And, and you know, you don't have to you walk around like I do. There's, there's a professor who comes in here um, who plants a stool right here, and she does a four-hour video, um, which is a really long one. But, uh, you know, no matter what your subject, if you use slides, um, you know, you, you could probably use something like this. Give it a shot. Um, be energetic and enthusiastic. The students pick up on this. Uh, gestures, point to the camera and your slides. Uh, you saw in that intro clip, you know, I'm getting more comfortable with it. I'm looking right at the camera. I'm pointing at the camera. You know, it makes it come alive to them. It makes it feel like, um, it makes it feel like instead of just watching a PowerPoint or watching a class, um, they're watching a documentary, an educational show, you know, uh, Bill Nye on, on YouTube, something like that. Uh, make yourself an engaging subject matter expert. Um, and if you don't, if you're thinking to yourself, well, how do I make this subject matter engaging? Just remember what got you interested in it in the first place. There's a reason you're here teaching this stuff. Um, do something interesting or funny at least every 30 to 45 minutes. Take a little break. Take the 30 seconds or a minute that it would take. You know, if nothing else, just show them a fun YouTube clip from an old Saturday Night Live or something. But try to tie it into your course topic as much as possible. Um, and, and you'd be surprised what you can find on YouTube. Like I actually, this is something I've always done in my class. I have clips from the old Muppet show from the 1970s because while I was watching it with my kids, I found that one, it's brilliant. But two, um, there are a lot of examples of good and bad management, organizational psychology. I was like, wow, I can use this in my class to detail some stuff. All right, class, tell us what Kermit the Frog did right and did wrong in that last example. So think creatively about this. So is there anything out there that you could use for your subject? And even if not, just a little something that you could do uh, to, to add some levity to to keep them interested, to give them a break as you go through. Um, use class participation as much as you can. 
uh, use their answers, their stories, even their videos, go through their homework, pick out, you know, make it open, make it clear to everybody, uh, build an atmosphere of psychological safety where they, they're, they feel comfortable, uh, maybe including a little joke with their answer. It's still an answer, it's still the right answer, but perhaps they just presented it in a humorous way, like I just showed you with the poll that we did. They still told me yes or no, I think it's ethical or not to, to kick Evelyn out or, or to, to keep her apartment, let her keep her apartment. Uh, but, but they were able to put their own spin on it, and their humor was, was able to work for everybody else. Um, and then, then finally, just remember, if they're bored, they're not learning. And usually we can, we can tell, right? We can look at them. We can see them in the audience. We can tell when they're falling asleep. We can tell when they're not engaging. This online stuff, it adds a whole other layer of difficulty for us because we can't see them, or if we can, we only, we only see this, that tiny little screen, right? It's hard to really tell, or they could turn off their video. You know, if they pause to take a break, you don't know if they're going to come back. Uh, but you want them to come back because that's our job, right? We want to get them excited about this material. We want to get them interested in them. And, and because of that, that's when they really learn. So what can you do to make sure that they're not bored? And you might think, wow, that's even harder when you're doing video. Um, and yeah, I think it is, um, uh, agreeing with the previous presenter. But there are things you can do, thinking creatively. Again, you look at some of this and go, that doesn't match my personality. Well, well yeah, don't do it. That doesn't match my topic. Okay, don't do it. But hopefully it can inspire you to just think a little bit of outside the box. How could I do something like that uh, to keep them interested, uh, entertained, engaged just a little bit, enough that they pay attention and they actually learn what I want them to know? I apologize again that I completely missed the template I was supposed to use, uh, but I hope some of this at least uh, spurred some ideas for everybody out there. And, and if nothing else, at least you got the link to the Silverman Recording Studio to reserve it because it's a great resource. Uh, there's my email address if you have any questions. And I'm happy to take any questions that have popped up in the chat while I've been waving my arms here. According to my smartwatch, I just burned 200 calories exercising. That's another advantage of doing it this way. Oh, Jim, thank you so much. That, uh, that was a great presentation. We do have some discussion and some questions going on in the chat. A lot of it really has to do with kind of how you're doing what you're doing. So let's clarify some of the technical issues that we're dealing with here. So you're joining us today by Zoom, but you're not adding the green screen and your PowerPoint behind you through the Zoom application, right? You're no, using no, it's not through the Zoom. Um, and Mr. Omar just walked in. Are you gonna? Are you gonna? Say, can you say hi, or, or should I treat you like Bob? Treat me like Bob, he says. All right. Uh, no, I'm in the green screen uh, recording studio. I came in uh, uh, just about 15 minutes before my presentation, and they helped me get set up with this where they've got, uh, again, you can't see it, but I, I've just got a, a blank gray wall right behind me. Um, he, uh, they, uh, Mr. Omar got it set up so that, uh, so that the green screen is working. I didn't really have to do anything except plug in my flash drive with my PowerPoint. This requires no technological expertise uh, on your behalf. I don't have a whole lot of that. Um, and then after he got the green screen set up, um, I just logged into Zoom and opened it up um, and I, I just kept it on mute. Did, does that answer your question? Yeah, I, I think so. I just wanted to clarify that for people because people are asking, is this something we can do at home with Zoom? And I know Zoom allows you to put kind of single, you know, non-motion graphics behind you one at a time, but this green screen thing and the interactivity is really not something you can do through the Zoom application. Not through the Zoom application on its own. One of my students actually, she, she got a green screen kit off of Amazon. Apparently it was like 75 bucks. It's, and, and she's a little more technologically inclined than I am. So she did set it up. So, but it is two separate programs. Um, there's one thing that would make the green screen functionality work. Um, and then there's, then you layer Zoom on top of that. Um, I'm not, I, I kind of lied at the beginning of this when I said, am I sharing my screen? I'm not sharing my screen at all. This is just the video feed through the webcam. I'm, I'm looking at the camera for the green screen studio right now. If you are not so technologically inclined, there are, there are videos online. I know I've seen them. You can Google them, green, set up home green screen, attach green screen to Zoom. But if, like me, uh, you're a little more lazy um, and you prefer to leave things in the hand of the experts, you're welcome to come in and use the green screen studio at Silverman. Right. So um, are you familiar with any of those programs that might be out there that allow you to do it uh, from home? Or didn't you really research that because you have this resource available to you? Yeah, I've been lazy, like I said, and done it. Mr. Omar, anything? Well, they can still do everything to basically Zoom. Um, well, no, they're still going to have to have a secondary device. Yeah, he's still going to have a secondary. I don't know if you can hear him. He's not mic'd up. Um, and maybe, for all you know, I'm just making him up. Uh, but yeah, Google it. I, I, I apologize that I am not the, uh, the no, IT okay. expert. As I said, 
that's the beauty of, green, of, of the Silverman Recording Library. You come in, you reserve it, they take care of all that for you. We also have a question. We also have a question about the, the facility at the libraries there. So I believe you said at the beginning of your presentation, all of what you do is asynchronous. You're going in there and recording, posting them, and then people are watching them after the fact. Is that library space also available to do something like you're doing now, which is a synchronous presentation to students, or isn't that really the purpose of it? So they, um, they will be able to teach live now. Right. Um, I, I'm sorry. I'm just double checking with Mr. Omar before I before I say anything. Again, we got help. Isn't that wonderful? Um, I did it asynchronously last semester because I had so many students who had to go back overseas when COVID hit, and I didn't think it was fair for my students overseas to have to do something in the middle of the night. Um, I would have preferred to do it synchronously, and you can do it synchronously, just like I'm doing right now. Um, you can come in and you can record a video, and they can upload it to your Panopto. You can record a video and they can give it to you on a flash drive, or you can do, they can set you up to do a Zoom call just like I'm doing right now, whatever you'd like. I mean, as long as it's within their hours of operation, obviously. But yeah, they can, you can totally do either synchronous or asynchronous education from the green screen studio. Uh, one more question about the studio itself. So is it set up where you have some sort of training with the library staff and then you can do it on your own? Or is Omar there every single time you're recording? Well, Mr. Omar is not the only person who's here. There's, um, us here. there's, there's a couple of different people who, who swap in and out, but um, it's, um, they'll set it up for you. It's not like they teach you and you, you manipulate the camera and, and open up the program and everything like that. You don't have to do anything like that. In fact, I think they prefer you don't because then there'll be, there'll be cleaning issues and, and you know, who knows what you're doing to the computer. Um, you know, I got a 10 minute training on, okay, walk between here and here, make sure you're wearing the microphone, you know, don't get too close, try to look at the camera, basic stuff like that. But the idea here isn't just that you go into a studio and you're on your own. Uh, the idea is you reserve the time, someone will come at the beginning and ask you, okay, exactly what do you want to do? They'll get you all set up. They'll just say, I mean, all you'll really have to do is plug in your, your USB drive with your slides or, or your notes or whatever it is into a laptop and, and they'll hand you a clicker. So you don't really need the technological expertise. Yeah, they, they help you get started. And, and like Mr. Omar is sitting with me right now in case there were any questions or in case I needed help because I've never done the synchronous thing before. Uh, maybe, maybe that's the best thing I can tell you. I've never done the synchronous Zoom with the green screen before. I just came in 15 minutes early. We got it set up pretty easy. Um, so, I mean, obviously it wouldn't hurt to know this stuff yourself, but again, I'm lazy and I'm, and I'm too busy just thinking about how to teach my class. So I leave it to the experts here. Does that answer the question? That, sorry. I was just Did asking you, if that answered the question. Yes, it did. Yes, thank you. Is there anything heading into the fall semester that you plan on changing or anything new you plan on implementing? Well, for me, I'm in, a, I'm in a, a unique situation in the fall. I only teach the executive MBAs. Um, and the executive MBAs pretty much demand to be in person as much as possible. However, I know after Thanksgiving, we're probably going to move to this. So actually, today was a big thing for me. I wanted to see, because I've only done asynchronous before, I want to do it synchronous. Now, with the executives, um, am I going to do fake ads? Probably not. Um, am I going to use YouTube clips? Um, to, to make my points. Yes. Am I going to do prof professors read mean qu tweets about themselves as a way of teaching them feedback? Absolutely. So yeah, it'll be a little bit different. But the biggest thing for me was actually today, just coming in here and seeing I'll be able to do this synchronously with my executives. Um, again, I'm really surprised by how many emails and how often it showed up in my student evaluations that they really appreciated that we were using this using this facility, that we were able to be a little bit more engaging, keep it light, that, that we put in some things uh, to make it a little, a little more fun, know your audience, right? Keep it relevant to your subject matter. But uh, yeah, I've completely forgotten the question by now, but I hope that answered it. That's okay. D yes, it did. Um, last question then, uh, Jim. Did you use any of these techniques or any video in your class previously to going online in your face-to-face -face classes? And do you, did you see any difference when you did go online with your student outcomes, your learning outcomes? Oh, that's a great question. Um, most of this was brand new when I went online, just desperately thinking, okay, how can I keep their attention? My class offline, my in-person class featured an awful lot of discussions and debates. And, you know, usually if you're having a really good discussion debate, you know, funny things will happen automatically and people are getting interested and engaged. So that was fine. My, my big concern was how can I keep students engaged going offline? How can I add a little bit of that humor back that's hard to do when you don't have the one-on-one -on -one connection, when you can't look them in the eye like you normally could? So most of this, with the exception of that thing I just told you about telling the lie, 
uh, uh, midway through the class and warning them that the lie was coming. Most of this I, I just came up with for the for the uh, for the offline. I can tell you from looking at my Panopto stats uh, that I had really good uh, participation, both in terms of of everybody watching the videos and everybody watching the whole thing, rather than just you know skipping around or watching parts of it. And I, I was very surprised to find because my tests are pretty hard. Uh, my uh, my final grades in my class were actually about the same. Um, so uh, looks like mission accomplished. Yeah, well, just one more clarification question that we're getting here, which is because you're on Zoom, even though you're not using Zoom to add the green screen in, you are on Zoom. So you can use and see the chat box. You can see the reactions, the hand raising and things, If right? So I've got it set right now where I can see my own screen. And I do that so I know what I'm pointing to and I know when I'm in the frame and out of the frame. Uh, but yes, like if I were to very awkwardly reach over to the keyboard, I could turn on the chat. Um, I can't see it now because I didn't want to leave the frame or do anything like that. I am looking right now at three monitors, actually four monitors, to give you an idea of what I've got here. Um, and one of them just shows me, but two, these two in the middle right here, they actually show the Zoom window. So I am looking right now, and right now, I'm looking at exactly what everybody out there is seeing. I see the Zoom window, I see the buttons, and there's a keyboard right here. So yes, you can totally interact with Zoom as long as you don't mind maybe being a little awkward stepping out of the frame, so on and so forth. Okay, I lied about the last question and they keep coming in. So did you see any difference in your student evaluations? Um, they were very good. Um, uh, I, I mean, I, w I was very, I was humbled. I was flattered by the evaluations. And what I heard a lot in the evaluations were, Things like um, the videos were engaging. It seemed like he was trying really hard to make this as good as an in-person class would be. I really appreciated him doing something just to keep our interest up. It, it was a lot of things like that. So I got, I got really good student evaluations and I actually credit all these things I just shared with you with those evaluations. They, keep in mind, you know, the students, they're, they're gonna see like five different professors, right? You be the best one, you know, it, it, they, make them compare everybody to you. Um, you know, make them think, because it's true that you really care about them so much that I'm gonna go a little bit above and beyond here and not just read my PowerPoint slides to make this come alive for you. And, and I, would it be a fair statement to say they were comparable to what you were getting with your in-class um, evaluations? Uh, yes, yes. I don't wanna, I don't wanna blush. So yes, they were, they were good, they were good. Uh, Last one more. It says, can you show us the sign up page one more time before we leave? I'm going to assume you're just looking for the link, which I can put up. There you go. Okay, great. Right there. Library.buffalo.edu slash video dash recording dash studios. To be honest, I just Googled UB Silverman Reservation, and that's how I always get to it. Yeah, and I think Jeremy uh, posted that in the chat as well, so people can scroll back up and find that in the chat. But hey, Jim, this was extremely, extremely helpful for us. You're getting a lot of kudos on the chat for a great presentation. So on behalf of everybody, let me thank you sincerely for sharing the time with us and sharing all those great ideas with us. Always a pleasure. If I can be of help to anybody, I don't know what I'm doing, right? I'm making this up as I go. If you've got some great ideas you'd like to share with me, um, I'm always open. Please send me an email. But thanks for having me. I'm honored to be here.